Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Now, today, we are going to be creating a game inside of Roblox Studio. A full-on functioning game that you guys can create easily and then get it published and then you and your friends can play it together. Okay, so let's get started, shall we? So basically, what I'm going to start off to do is I'm going to create some leader stats. So basically, the style of the game that I'm going to be creating today is I'm going to be creating a simulator. Now, um, if you don't know what a simulator is, uh, well, basically, I'm going to be creating a game where you come inside the game and every time you click or every time you do an action, it will uh, give you cash. And then this cash, you can cash out for something in the store, which will give you more money. So it could be like you hold a tool, which I'm probably going to do. So I'm probably going to make it so that you hold a item in your hand. And then when you lift it or something like that, um, you uh, like a weight, you get cash and then you can buy a bigger or a better weight. And then you become bigger or you can do, we can basically do many different things. But today we're going to start off by doing leader stats and the cash system. And then we're going to, uh, we're going to carry on, um, probably next week. Uh, maybe not that, but you know, we're going to work on it more and, uh, leave in the comments below what you want to see for the simulator and, uh, what you want to know, uh, when building a simulator and I can teach you guys how to do that. So anyway, um, let's get started. So I'm going to come into the, uh, SSS so the server script service and let's create a uh, server script. Now, a server script is the normal script. When you create it, it's just called script. It's not a local script. Those are the uh, scripts on the side of the client. This is a server script. Okay, so now we can start writing. So first of all, I'm going to start off by doing game.players. And we are going to take the player added event. Uh, and then we are going to connect to that and we are going to run a function. Now, basically, what we are doing right now is we are saying um, when a player is added, so when a player joins into the game, we want to run this function. So let's actually add a player up here, uh, just like this, the PR, uh, PLR, uh, which is for player. And we are basically saying we are basically getting the player. So when the player is joined, we're going to get that player using the P. And we're going to call them PLR as in player for short. So I'm going to create, uh, well, first of all, we need to create a folder inside of the player, which is called leader stats. So this is going to, where it's going to be holding all of the data that we want. So, um, so first of all, I'm going to create a variable. I'm going to call it local stats. Uh, or stats, and then we want this variable to be to be creating that um, that folder. So we're going to need to do instance dot new. Now what this is doing is it's basically creating it, and we want to create the folder, and then we want to give it the parent. Well, we want to put it inside of the player, the P R L, uh, P L R. Sorry, <laughs> and then we want to name it. So stats dot name. So we're naming the folder. And we want to name it leader stats. Oh, and remove this. But now we can come ahead and uh, start creating the actual cache, the actual cache system. So let's come ahead and do local uh, cache. And we are going to do the same thing by creating an instance dot new and a int value. And then this, this time we want the parent to be stats. So, well, we want, yeah, we want the, uh, the int value to be inside of the leader stats folder inside of the player. And then now we can start naming its properties. So let's do cache dot name, um, equals cache. Uh, so we're going to call it cache. And then we want to do cache dot value. So when a player joins into the game, we want to give them zero cache so that they start off with nothing. Okay, so now we can test this out. So let's head into the game and we should see that up in the top right corner. Yes, there we go. There is my username and there is the cache. So we can come into the players and we can see we now have a folder named leader stats. And inside of this is the cache with the value of zero. And you can see if I change this to 10, our cache up here becomes 10. 
So it's basically, this bar over here is basically just showing all the details from inside this folder. And what you need to remember is that it has to be called leader stats because that's what this, that's what that system is called. So if we were to call it something else, it wouldn't, it wouldn't show up. So if I was to name it leader stats or something like that, it probably wouldn't show up. So we need to name it leader stats so that the system knows that that is a leader stat, basically. Okay, so now that we've got this, we, we want to be able to um, save this data because what would be the fun in playing for, let's say, an hour and then you come back the next day and all of your data is gone from that hour and you have to restart all over again. So we are going to use something called data stores. Now, what data stores are is, is basically we're going to use the data store service and we are basically going to hold their data inside of a data store. So all of the all of the cash that they get we need to hold that inside of the data store when they leave the game so uh, their last bit of money so the last the last amount of cash they had needs to be saved so let's do local um let's just name it data store for now so uh, i will name it data store and then what we're going to want to do is we want to get the service from the game so i'm going to do game dot uh, game colon get service and then we so basically we're going to get the service of data store service and we are going to do get uh, data store so we're going to get the data um, and I'm going to name it uh, what should I name it let's just name it cash data store And then now we can come ahead and make it so that it saves when we leave. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to do the same, basically the same thing as when I did player added, but I'm going to do player removing. So I'm to do game dot players, game dot players dot uh, player removing colon connect. And we're going to do a fun uh, function, uh, and we want to do player. I'm going to do a capital so it makes it easier for you guys to see. Um, player removing, and yep. Oh, game dot players. <laughs> it for some reason with what well, it's not for some reason, but Roblox's Lua is very picky. Well, like most programming languages, so you make one silly spe uh, spelling error, and it all goes rubbish it, it just breaks so you gotta check uh you gotta double check it so if you get an error inside of your code uh, or something doesn't work uh you always need to check your spelling errors uh just to make sure that uh just to make sure that it's not that and with some lines with some types of code they underline when you've uh, done a bad spelling error so keep that in note uh keep that in mind sorry <laughs> and then anyway so we want to get the data store so i'm going to do data store and we want to set a sync. I call it a sync. I don't know if anybody else calls it something different, but I call it a sync. Um, and basically what we are doing is, there are two things that you can use mainly, which is the set a sync and the get a sync. So basically it's setting the data and getting the data. So we're basically, when we're saying set a sync, we are basically going to um, set the value, like the data inside of the data store um, to whatever we put next. So first of all, we're going to want to get the players, uh, we're going to, we want to run it through the player's uh, user ID because that wouldn't be, that wouldn't be good if it just went through any, any, any random person. And then we want to do comma, and then we want to do player, um, yeah, we want to do player dot leader stats. So we're going to their folder and we want to save the data inside of this. So we want to get the cache and then we want to get its value because remember we're creating a int value. So we want to, um, we want to save the value from that. So now that we have this, it should be saving whatever we do after this. But right now this, this is all good, yeah. But every time you join into the game now, it'll always be zero because we're setting the uh, the value to uh, the cash value to zero. So what we what we're going to want to do is we want to do cash dot value equals. Uh, so we want to create it again, and we want to 
um, set this value to uh, the data store. So we're going to do data store. And then like I said, we want to get the data from this data store. So I'm going to use get a sync. And then we want to get that towards the players player user ID. So we want to get it from the user uh, from the user's ID, because um, anytime you're referencing a, a player, like say you're going towards one player, you always want to go through their user ID because if you go through their username later in the future, they could change their username, and then you'd have to change that code. So you always want to go through the user's. ID. Otherwise, when they change the uh, their cha change their name, it will um, not save their data. It would the data would have been saved towards that previous username. So you always want to go through the user ID because user ID can never change when you create an account. Okay, so now when we test the game, we should see that everything works perfectly fine except for this. You can see that it says API services rejected request with an error. So basically what we are saying, what it's saying is it's not letting us do it. It's not letting us save our data when we do this. So what we're gonna need to do is come up here to game settings and we're gonna need to click this. And first of all, we're going to need to publish our game. So let's just publish our game and let's call it something random. So um, I I'm gonna call it uh, simulator. Okay, so now we have simulator, I'm going to just publish it and create it. So now we have this simulator uh, place, we can come over back to the game settings. And now we can change all of the game settings from inside of Roblox Studio. So I'm going to come ahead and go to uh, security. And on security, you see that we have uh, allow HTTP requests, enable studio access to API services, allow third party sales, allow third party teleports. We want to enable these first two. So enable studio to access uh, access to API services. And we want to do this to allow uh, allow HTTP requests. And then we can save this. And now we are, should be good. So now we can hop into the game and if we get any errors or we get the same thing, but we should be getting, we should, it should be saved now. So let's double check on here. Okay, and then let's publish. And now when, once we've done this, let's head down to the, um, let's go down to our create page and let's come to the simulator. And now we want to make sure that is ticked. And then we want to click back. And now we are coming to our game. Uh, and then it's privated. Yes, you can make it public, but I'm going to keep privated for now. And then now we can join into the game. And uh, since I haven't programmed any of the actual adding to the cache, we should see that when I come into this, we have no errors. But uh, what I did there was actually F9. So you click F9 on your keyboard, and then you come into this, uh, the developer console. And if we click over to server, we can actually write some lines of code. So since I can't add any cache through the game yet, I'm going to have to add it manually through code. So let's do the same as if we were to, as if we were to um, run, uh, if we were to um, locate something. So we need to go to game.players. And then we need to get my username. So my username is Mudstar Tommy. And then we want to do uh, the leader stats. So we are basically saying go to the players, get Mudstar Tommy, so me, and go to their folder named leader stats. And then we want to go to the value cache. And then we want to get its value. And we want to change and we want to change it to let's say 100. And then now you can see up here we have 100 cache. And now hopefully when we leave the game now and we join back in, we should still have that 100 cache because we have created a data store. And as you can see, we still have the 100 cache. So that guys was the first episode of creating a simulator inside of Roblox or creating a full on game inside of Roblox. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys learned something new and I will see you guys in the next video. Goodbye.